Hello random YouTube people. This new DIY video is something that I came across on accident. I went to put the batteries back in my trailer and noticed that the battery box was full of water and that's where I had stored my cables. And one of the cables that was in there was a circuit breaker for the tongue jack of my trailer. So this video will show you how I went through the process of replacing that circuit breaker and the changes that I made to allow the power, tack, power tongue jack, that's a tongue twister. Uh, anyways, you get the idea. Right everyone, you know the drill. Subscribe. I mentioned I went out to replace the batteries in my trailer and found these battery boxes full of water. This is my Forest River Stealth camping trailer. And I've got a Husky tongue jack installed. This came with it, so it's not going to be an install video, but I'm showing you an issue that I had. I came out to install my batteries and these boxes, at least this one, was full of water. And this is where I had kept my cables, like the battery, positive and negative to go between the batteries, and the power breaker, so the circuit breaker. And this was sitting in the box and it has become very deteriorated and starting to fall apart. And the wires were all rusted out. So this video will be showing I'm going to be replacing the circuit breaker. I have also drilled some tiny holes at the bottom so that the water will run out if there is any in there. And to keep the circuit breaker out of the way, I have drilled a new hole and the new circuit breaker will stick out the side and there will be a waterproof cap on here that I click to turn this on and off if I need to or to flip the circuit breaker if it gets flipped to turn it back on. So I'll show you how I rewire this the new circuit breaker into this line. The circuit breaker is intended to be a junction, if you will, between the power tongue jack of my trailer to lift the trailer and the battery. Now it's clearly this particular wire here connects to the battery and they have it, whoever wired this had it going into the load, which is not correct. The power source should be going into the line side, not the load side. The line or I is in, the load or O is out. So it's a good thing that what happened to this happened because now I can rewire it correctly. Circuit breaker was just drenched. It was um, had been sitting in for water for who knows how many weeks before I went to try to reinstall the battery and this is how I came across this issue. So this circuit breaker needs replacing as you can totally tell. Okay, we're looking at the tools and the electrical connections that I'll be using for this particular project. So I have a replacement connection here that round that will fit over the battery. This one's a little bit smaller, but that should be okay because on the marine battery, it's just going over a screw and the terminal is not as big as it would be on a car battery. Now, this particular wire will go from the circuit breaker to the battery, so it doesn't have to be particularly long. But as mentioned, the new wire needs to go from the line to the battery not into the load, so this was wired wrong. But I need something to connect the new wire to the new circuit breaker, and I'm going to use these little male connector pieces. They slide right over those little prongs of the circuit breaker, and then you crimp the wire down, and then I'll run some heat shrink um, over the side and just get it all nice and secure. Then on the other side of the wire, one will be this connection, and then I haven't decided just yet what I'm going to do with the other wire. So I'm going to connect the wire with one of these male pieces here, but where this connects to the power tongue jack wire, I'm not sure if I want to use this, which you just put each side of the wire in and crimp it and hand shriek it, and then that'll be a secure solid connection. But that'll never be able to be disconnected from the circuit breaker easily where these ones, if I get another male and female end, if I were to put the female end on the line coming in from the 
power tongue jack or the other way around, it doesn't really matter, I guess. If I needed to change out the circuit breaker again for whatever reason, I can just simply pull the wire off this connection here. If I can get that to focus. Ooh, well, it's just gonna not be focused. And then of course I got some new 10 gauge wire from AutoZone and I knew it was 10 gauge because I took my wire strippers and I went around until I got to the size of 10 down here. So I knew it was 10 gauge wire. And then of course some heat shrink. And lastly is this flexible tubing, which I will put around the cable from the power tongue jack just to give it a little bit more um, protection instead of just being an, an exposed 10 gauge wire from the tongue jack. So let's get to it. Here is my new circuit breaker. It's the same 30 amp as the previous one, and it supports the 200 or 125 to 250 AC volts, and it will do um, 32 volts DC. So when I connect this, I'll be running the new line into the line side, and then the line going to the tongue jack through the load side. Now, when I put this through the box, I will tighten down this nut, which will hold it in place. And then on the other side, which is exposed to the elements, has this waterproof cap over the reset button. So that'll stick out and allow me to click the reset button without having to open up the battery box and move around the cable. All right, so at this point, you might be wondering why a circuit breaker? Two reasons. The Husky Power Tongue Jack when you buy it brand new, comes with the circuit breaker in the kit to wire up, which is what you see here. The installer, of course, wired it incorrectly, and this circuit breaker was just drenched in water because of the water filling up my battery boxes, like I explained. But there's another reason for a circuit breaker. If you watch any other videos about installing power tongue jacks, you'll see lots of videos showing inline fuses. So inline fuse and circuit breaker do the same task. If the line is overloaded, then the circuit breaker will um, pop, if you will, and the fuse will blow. On a fuse, you have to replace the fuse. So you'll have to keep some fuses in your trailer at all times in case it blows so you can replace the fuse. Or if the circuit breaker, if the line blows and this gets popped out, all you do is push the button down to reset. So you don't have to worry about carrying around fuses. That's why I'm going with the circuit breaker. Now onto the install. So the first step, I'm gonna take my 10 gauge wire and strip some off the end here so that I can put it into my male connector before I connect it to the circuit breaker. I've stripped just enough of the insulation off the wire that I can insert this end into the male connector. And then of course I will crimp it down so it holds onto it nice and tight. You can solder these if you want to, which is what the previous person did with the other one. Um, you don't have to, you can use these connectors. Um, it should work just fine, but you'll wanna make sure you crimp that down nice and tight so that the line doesn't tug away and is secure. Of course, before I do that, I'm gonna run some heat shrink down the wire so I can pull the heat shrink back over this connection ran the male connector over the wire and held down my wire cutters with the crimper section and squeezing as hard as I can to get that to be a tight connection. And you can see I had already cut some heat shrink. So I'll roll that up overneath and shrink it all together. With the wire connection crimped on to my 10 gauge wire, I have connected the male end to the circuit breaker and this is going to be the end that connects to the battery. So I put it in the line side, line I meaning in, and now I'll just push up my shrink wrap and heat shrink it all together. So I got out my heat gun and shrink wrapped this down. I should say shrink, heat shrinked it down so that the connection is nice and secure, somewhat waterproof, I suppose. All right, another thing I'd like to mention is the circuit breaker or the fuse, um, if you decide to go to a fuse, should be as close to the battery as you possibly can. I give myself a little bit of extra length here just because I'm not quite sure exactly how far I need to go to the battery, but it shouldn't be too long. 
is I'm connecting this to the box, like I mentioned earlier. But let's say the tongue jack, you have it on a high setting and you're pushing it all the way as high as it can extend, it's gonna draw more power. If it draws too much power, you want that to um, hit the fuse or hit the circuit breaker from right from the battery as soon as possible. You don't wanna put this near the tongue jack because then it'll have to travel the entire length of the wire to get to that section before the fuse or the circuit breaker trips the line. So you want this to be as close to the battery as possible. That will save you some electrical damage to your wires um, in the future. Next, I've gone ahead and crimped on another male connector onto the end of my wire, and I'll connect it to the load side. And I'm gonna leave this whole bundle of wire connected because again, not quite sure exactly how much wire I'm gonna need. Following the same process, I installed the eyelet that's gonna go on the battery terminal and heat shrink that together. And we're ready to go take this back out to the trailer. To set the record straight, this is a female connector. Well, this is a male connector. I think the, it's pretty obvious which one's which. Maybe not in 2021. <laughs> now that I'm back outside, the first thing I'm gonna do is run my new corrugated tubing around my existing wire, all the way up to the top of the tongue jack motor. Okay, I have my new wire running all the way from the top of the motor, or the wire cover, I should say. And I have it zip tied down to the bottom. Now, as you can see, my frame um, isn't like some other trailers where there's some holes in the frame you can run wires through. These are solid, and so I can't run it through that. I did notice that the propane lines were running through the box, or underneath the box and going through this hole. So I think I'm going to try to run my wire this way and go straight through the batteries rather than trying to zip tie it to the frame all the way around. Okay, what I decided to do is zip tie my cable to run across the frame just at this part. And then it comes up underneath and rejoins all the cables right here. And then they're zip tied. This whole set of cables goes on the underside of the inside of these two boxes. And now what I think I'm going to do is drill another hole right here for this wire bundle to come into the box and then the circuit breaker will come out and poke out here so if I need to reset the circuit I can just click the button on the outside of the box and I decided to go on the back side of the box and have the battery sit on the front side and then everything should wire up right here to the positive terminal. Before I go any further this is the old connection to the old circuit breaker and I'm going to undo all of this electrical tape to see what they have hiding behind here. There might be a male or female connection that I can just leave on to this existing wire and attach my new wire to it using the same connection. Looks like underneath all of that electrical tape was a butt connector and this side is actually not in there very well. I can just pull it out with my fingers so it wasn't crimped down very well. So. I'm going to take off this existing butt connector by just clipping the wire here and I'm either going to add a new butt connector or do my male and female connections so if this happens in the future it's just an easy pull off push on situation and I don't have to clip any wires. I have drilled my new hole at the back of the battery box and I have quite a bit of length still so I'm going to go ahead and install the circuit breaker in this hole that I drilled earlier and then get an idea of how much wire I'm going to need. This requires two hands. All right, here's my new circuit breaker reset button sticking out of the box. My waterproof cap on the end. And it sits back nice and flush with the back of the box. Now next, I'm going to use a male connector on this end to connect to a female connector for this wire. And I'm going to package all the wires back up in this bundle so it looks nice and pretty. But I don't need to cut this very long because I have enough wire from the tongue jack motor itself into this box. So let's get that all set up and I'll show you what it looks like. 
I have the Mel connector heat shrunk to the wire from the tongue jack. And then I have the female connector heat shrinked to the circuit breaker wire coming up from the load. And I'm going to connect them together and then heat shrink those together. Okay, those connections are heat shrinked together. And now I'm going to bundle them up inside this cable, cut off the excess and make it look all nice and pretty. I said that before, but one step at a time. All right, there we are. I have it just going in a straight line and the excess I decided to put outside between the two boxes. Okay, we have the battery all hooked up and you can see the cord tucked down nice and neat in the back there. And the cable from the circuit breaker comes up and attaches to the positive side. And again, my wire runs through here and it connects with the propane cables and goes up underneath to the other side and up into my Husky tongue jack. So if all is done right, this should work. I don't want to go too far because I still have my jack stands down. So don't want to put too much pressure on it, but just want to see if the motor is working. There you go. Power. So there we go. That's how I was able to rewire this and put a new circuit breaker coming out of the side that I can easily click if I need to. And all of the wires coming up and neatly tucked in behind the battery. So the only thing I need to be concerned about is um, being careful to drop this in and not pull on that cord too much, but it really wasn't a big deal. So hopefully this helps if you have a similar issue with your tongue jack. Um, it's not specific to Husky. So let me know what you think. Subscribe.